Welcome to another episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this episode, I'm reviewing The Fall, Last Days of Gaia. This is a German tactical role-playing game that was released back in 2004 or 2005, and some former Black Isle Studio staff worked on this game. Unfortunately, it never got an official English translation, but thankfully, thanks to some fans, there's an unofficial English translation and that's how I'm able to play it and review it for you, and it's up to date with all the latest patches. There are spoilers, you have been warned, and any gameplay footage showing battles where I don't show the difficulty in the first five seconds, that means I'm playing on normal. Here's my review of The Fall, Last Days of Gaia. You are the survivor of a village that was massacred by just the worst of what humanity has to offer. There's a cutscene right in the beginning when you start the game up that explains more of the background. Unfortunately, it's in German and that part wasn't translated so I couldn't understand it. But playing the game, beating it, talking to the characters and so on, this is a game where it's a post-apocalyptic wasteland. War, famine, disease, and the worst of human behavior almost destroyed the entire earth. And you're left in the aftermath, the ashes of what happened and everyone's trying to rebuild society in their own image. You, wandering around after watching everything you know, everyone you love die in a massacre, trying to find your way in the world. Your father is dead, your village is massacred, so you decide to stop aimlessly wandering around and join this new government, this new way of life as a soldier in command of up to a group of six to deal with the enemies of this new faction and to supposedly bring stability to a world devastated by a post-apocalyptic nightmare. And if luck shines upon you, maybe you can find some clues about your sister. Maybe she's alive. But of course, life is rarely ever so simple. And who are these shadows? Who is this faction known as the Shadow that people talk about? Are they really demonic mutants, as you've been told? Or is that just an urban legend? Superstition. And what does the rest of the area think about this new government's authority? Do they even respect or acknowledge the factions fighting for power? And why is there conflict between the shadows and the new government? All of this and more are the questions that present itself to you. And it's up to you to find out the good, the bad, and everything in between about this new world. And that's how the fall, Last Days of Gaia, starts off. At first glance, the story was uninteresting to me. I thought it was just another post-apocalyptic game with factions fighting in it. And to be fair, a story doesn't have to change the gaming industry or revolutionize the genre to be good. But my first impressions were not that good. The new government didn't interest me. They came off as really generic. But as soon as a faction known as the Shadows came into play, and it doesn't take that long for them to pop up, I started warming up to it. And one of the factors that helps the story is the humor. From what I've read, two former Black Isle Studios staff were crucial to the development of this game, supporting the lead designer. Now, I don't know if these two were involved in the development of Fallout 2, but I do know that one of them worked on Baldur's Gate 2, and both of them worked on Van Buren, also known as Interplay's cancelled Fallout 3. And it shows. The Fall, Last Days of Gaia's humor, is definitely reminiscent of Fallout 2. If they didn't work on the game, they studied it for sure, or played it. The blatant, in-your-face cultural references and light-hearted humor, and it works. The protagonist is sometimes quick on their feet, delivering some funny on-the-fly responses, some good one-liners, and they talk to some really goofy characters, and they're just blunt and sometimes ruthless in their insults, and it works. One side quest came to mind where this dirty, messy, ugly motherfucker wanted to date a woman from a nearby village and you have the option to tell him two things. One, you need to clean yourself up because you look like farmyard scum. Or two, there's no way she's that ugly that she would date someone like you. God damn, poor Jim Bob. You have the option to help this poor dirty fuck but that's your choice. So the humor is there. There are a bunch of side stories besides the main one to go through, and this is where the humor really stands out. Although there is an abundance of get this, kill that, but surprisingly there is a story attached to a lot of these side quests. It definitely could have used more creativity. Unfortunately this game does suffer from the same old tropes of you have to do these sometimes really tedious tasks, including killing this or hey you need to repair something, but Thankfully for you, all of this stuff is found in this small area right next to the person giving the quest. 
But at the very least, there is a story to a lot of these side quests, including witch trials, futuristic car parts, dating advice, a trip to a supposed divine area that's in the Bible, and more. And to my surprise, I liked a good amount of these side stories, a lot more than I was expecting. I don't know why, but my first impressions, first glance, I thought I was going to hate this game, but it grew on me. Unfortunately, they missed out on using the skills you level up to influence the main and side story more. There are certain things you can do, for example, speech and repair. There's a skill check known as eloquence that determines if you can get past certain parts of a quest by how well you can speak and repair. For example, you can skip getting a part because you're good at repairing something, so you don't need to do that. Other than that, it's lagging in that area, but this is a tactical RPG. The story is linear, more linear than a lot more RPGs because in this type of role playing game, it's about training your people and tactical battles, enemy AI, where you fight, how you place them, what do you do, pause in the game and planning out different strategies during combat. So that's the main focus of the game. The story is there and there are side stories you can do to level up and stuff like that, but it's linear for the most part. I think they could have tweaked that a little bit more, but the use of lighthearted humor in a lot of these scenarios does help and it's one of my favorite parts of the game. I remember being stuck in Vessel Town, and I'm not telling you why, but this is a harbor area with two layers in it. And the guy who runs a museum at the top of this area is very neurotic and obsessive. And in order to get the key, he gives you a fucking quiz. A fucking test. And it's like 10 questions long. And when you finally get that key and get down there, you are abandoned. So in order to get out, when you're done with what you gotta do, you and some other people create this primitive, funky looking flying contraption. It looks like something that was made in 1912 by the Wright Brothers or some shit like that and you make it to the top layer of the map but this cutscene is so goofy it ends with your character busting their fucking ass almost dying and crashing there is nuance in the main story gray areas in the fight between the new government and the shadows and it does take a little bit for it to pick up steam and get better but there's enough depth with the background of the shadows to make it worth it and to continue on but once the story gets better it's just not explored enough, it doesn't keep up that steam. The main factions, the Shadows, and the New Government. The New Government, I never really liked them, they were just boring and generic. And the Shadows, while I liked them, there should have been more there. It's like picking up a six piece of chicken just to find two. Obviously there are twists in the story and it's not all that it seems between the Shadow and the New Government. Who's a good guy, who's a bad guy, or they're all bad. Not gonna spoil it, but it's pretty obvious there's more to this than just saving your sister and being a part of the new government, the good guys. But once it really starts getting there, I just feel that they put the foot off the gas. There should have been a lot more explained with why the shadows got that way. They do tell you why, but what I mean is a lot more to this. It just felt like, I'm not gonna say rush because... There is a good chunk of gameplay there after you find out what's going on with them. There's definitely a lot more to it than what you might expect in the first 5 or 30 minutes. There's no denying that it's rough, but there is something there. They just could have executed the main story a lot better. And even though the main story came up short, they could have done more with it, made the new government faction a lot more interesting, and so on. I already said in my critiques, there are enjoyable elements within the main story. For example, the biggest one being the shadow and their background, and some of the ways some people use technology. It's explained in the main story, not going to spoil it. But thankfully, outside the main story, the side characters, the side story, the lighthearted humor, the comedy, the things that you can explore and see that doesn't necessarily have to do with the main quest, they picked up the slack and made it a more enjoyable experience. So even with my critiques, I had a good time with the story overall in terms of side story plus main story. Now the people that worked on the translation did a good job. I'm sure it's not 100% German to English. I'm sure there's American slang or other Americanisms, however the fuck you say that, that replace some of the original dialogue and there's typos. But it's a competent translation. You can read this in English, you can play it front to back and understand it. That's the most important thing. 
and I did watch other people play the English translation on YouTube and other websites and it matched up with what I was playing and I did my own tests where for example since the voice acting is in German and I'm reading the text in English if someone says a name or a place they're gonna say it they're gonna say David or say whatever the area's name is the German voice acting they're gonna say that name and it matched up with what was going on in the English translation the fall last days of Gaia is a tactical role-playing game there's a top-down perspective and you can pause the action anytime and set up tasks where the game automatically pauses for example when someone sees an enemy think of games like Fallout Tactics and Baldur's Gate and you kind of get the idea of the gameplay now when it comes to tactical RPGs I got no problems admitting it I'm mediocre at best my problem is I usually hyper fixate on up to three people so any game where I'm planning out battles for any number above that and it's a pain in the ass but I also need these six people cause I ain't good enough to deal with this type of game with any less than that. I'm not Sun Tzu and I'm not Machiavelli. I only read the Prince, I think I read like one page of that and I never read Sun Tzu's book. What I'm saying is that even in a video game I'm not a tactician. I'm usually in my own world 25-8 and I'm too lazy to be one. The only things I can really do in terms of tactics is either ambush enemies or do that thing where I hide most of my party members somewhere and send one out to lure the enemies into my ambush. And it works a lot of the time, but if they get keen on what I'm doing and if they have good AI and they flank me, well, I'm pretty much fucked. Since this is a tactical RPG, the meat of the game is about using the characters you train level up and specialize in certain skills and so on in battle plan out attacks pause mid battle and so on and i would say that there's a nice variety of weapons and while this game does a bit of the wacky out of this world humor when it comes to equipment it's surprisingly grounded i think there's only one or two weapons that i found that can qualify as not really grounded in out of this world but it's what you would expect in a modern post-apocalyptic world 99% of the time. Whether that's a good or bad thing, it's up to you. Either is fine with me, and I found myself using the majority of the skills. Having up to six characters means you can tailor them to take advantage of most of it. I had two people good with light and heavy weapons, one of them being good with snipers, also, while the other one was good at explosives. I had one medic, one person skilled in pickpocketing and lockpicking, and Che, the character that I chose in the beginning and named, was sort of a jack of all trades with light weapons, lock picking explosives, and a decent medic. Also, the last character I had was great with technical and driving, and surprisingly, I found a lot of use in the driving skill. I originally thought it was going to be a trash throwaway skill and just completely fucking useless, but there aren't many vehicles in the game. I found three throughout my entire playthrough, and I probably explored 95% of the world. And having someone competent in driving definitely makes traversing the areas a lot easier. And the map too, so it's a useful skill. There are perks that you can gain by hitting certain milestones within the skill. You can't pick them, but they're there. They were lacking a bit. I would like to see more done with that, but at the very least, it's there. And as I said before, your skills outside of battle and gathering resources, they're barely used in the side quests and the main quests. It's pretty straightforward. You can talk your way out of some stuff using eloquence, and the technical skill will get you past certain parts of a quest faster, but it's not the type of game where your skills are used in dialogue. A tactical RPG lives and dies on the strengths of its enemies, AI, and areas. And the AI in this game is... rough. It's rough as fuck. It's rough like sandpaper. Whatever's rougher than sandpaper, it needed a lot more work as god Damn, does it have some problems. Playing this on normal, which is the starting difficulty, I recommend starting out on hard because normal was a bit too easy for me. And when I'm saying that in a tactical RPG, when I'm saying that the normal difficulty is a bit too easy in a tactical fucking RPG, that means something's up. Because anyone that saw my Fallout Tactics review knows I'm not the best at these type of RPGs. I can beat them with enough time, but it doesn't mean I'm great. It's a game that relies on power and numbers and equipment instead of good AI because the enemy AI is just fucking oblivious for the most part. They're blind as bats and they're fucking stupid. You can send a character right in front of them almost 
and it's like they're blind. Sometimes they won't notice you until you are almost within touching distance of them. It almost feels like you have to grab their asses, massage their taint, and tell them that they're beautiful in order for them to notice you. That's oddly specific. I know why. There's a tab open in my browser. I was just watching a porn video where it was a massage and that exact situation happened. This is why I try not to record during horny hours. Other times, I'll run in the sights of two enemies and only one will follow me. The other one just stands there like nothing happened, even though he saw me and even though his friend is running after me and I'm fucking right there. This happened multiple times. The enemy AI also has this weird tendency to hyperfixate on one party member, making it way easier to control them and lead them around like lemons while the others pick them off. I remember one fight in particular where I used Che to run around the base while a majority of the enemies chased him around the base in the same circle slowly getting eliminated one by one and it took him forever to figure out the game and start attacking the rest of my group. Which the hyperfixation can either benefit you or fuck you over cause sometimes you're put in battles where it's like one of those fucking line battles from the 1700s like we're fighting in Napoleon's time or Civil War, whatever, American Revolution, and everyone's lined up firing at each other. By the way, fuck that. I don't give a fuck if I time travel back to those times. You ain't gonna catch me lining up for shit. But if you're put in that position, it can be rough having four people firing at one person. So besides the funky, rough AI, there is a challenge. As I said before, it's about power and numbers and gear. You'll walk into bases where it's 6 against 15 and maybe 20 in certain spots. And later on, the enemies pack a heavy punch, for example with laser rifles. And there were some moments where the enemy AI were competent. In some fights, instead of getting lured into my ambush, when I sent one of my characters out to try to get them all to get fucked over, instead of chasing me around the corner and just going into an obvious trap, they stayed down in one area and waited for me to engage them instead of going to their utter doom. And... There were some times where if it was one enemy left and they were trying to chase my whole crew instead of chasing me into an obvious fucking outnumbered battle, they would stay down in one area and try picking me off and I had to run to them which would put me in harm's way. There are some moments where the enemy AI shows that they have more than two brain cells but that's not enough. The enemy AI is garbage, it's not good at all. And even at the higher difficulties, because I did go back and play a lot of battles on the hardest difficulty very hard, and I did bump up the difficulty too hard during my regular playthrough. And even then, the only thing that makes it harder is when you bump it up to a higher difficulty, it just makes the enemies harder to kill and makes you more susceptible to damage. And that's fine, that definitely gives you more of a challenge, but... It's a tactical RPG and the most important thing should be different moves like flanking, different strategies, you really having to outthink your opponent and unfortunately that's not the case with this game and it's a missed opportunity for sure. Now besides there being some challenge with what I said before, when you do sleep to recover some health in an area, sometimes you do get random encounters and these can be very tough because you can get put up against a pack of wolves, you can get put up against a pack of seekers or some wild fucking boars and those things are tough, they can two shot your fucking party members. So it's a welcome addition to add some risk and reward for when you're trying to rest after some tough encounters. Unfortunately, that's only for when you're inside an area. You can sleep and there's a chance for a random encounter, but when you're traveling throughout the world map, there's no random encounters. And that sucks. There should have been something in there to spice it up because when you're traveling throughout the world map, it can be a slow process, especially if you don't have a vehicle. At least put some stuff in there, different types of random encounters, and if you're good at a certain skill, you can avoid some, or there's a chance to avoid it, or you can fail that check and get inside these encounters. There should have been something like that. It's only for when you're resting in an area and it's not on the map. That's stupid. There are some quality of life improvements. You can do certain things with your party AI. You can command them all to reload at once. You can pick certain party members and tell them to pick up 
every item that's in a certain radius so you don't have to click on every item in there if you want all the stuff there and you can pause of course it's a tactical rpg and you can mess with the slider to make it as slow or as fast as you want and there's certain commands that you can do there's certain tasks that you can pick so it automatically pauses like i said before for example when someone sees an enemy or someone starts firing it can automatically pause so you're not caught off guard so there are some things there even though the party member ai is also kind of stupid but is it a challenging game that depends i believe that no matter what your skill level is with these type of role-playing games you should start off on hard because it's too easy and when i'm saying that for a tactical rpg it's something because i'm not usually good at these type of games so if you want some challenge bump up the difficulty just don't expect a metaphorical chess game with your opponents now when i first started playing this game i was nervous that it was going to be too generic in terms of artistic style this game is rough looking i believe it came out in either 2004 and 2005 and it doesn't have the best graphics but i don't really care about that i'm talking about artistic style direction things like that and for the first couple of hours i thought it was just going to be generic villages because you can tell that a lot of the assets are reused and i thought it was just going to be like that the whole game i understand it's post-apocalyptic it's a wasteland you have to rebuild society so it's going to look like that but i was definitely thinking that holy shit is it just going to be the same type of villages but thankfully as you continue on through the game the artistic direction the style it does start to get better nothing wrong with villages but you do see other things like a city not a village but a city and the way this city looks the story behind it the myth behind it i thought that was really cool and there's some underground areas and especially the last area that you visit in the game i thought that one was probably the best in terms of artistic style and the story behind it and i can't forget vessel town a two-layered area an abandoned shipyard and you can tell that they use these decrepit decaying rusting old gigantic ships as their infrastructure that's probably my favorite area i know i said the last area in the game is but it's definitely a tie but i think i give the edge to vessel town but there is some uniqueness some creativity in terms of artistic direction i just think that they could have done more especially with different enemy types making different types of soldiers sometimes it just comes off as everything looking a little bit too much just because it's in a wasteland and things like that you can make it creative there's certain ways to roam around it i don't know there's certain ways to get around that i like the music i had no problems with it i don't think it was outstanding but i liked hearing it in the background now this is a buggy game there's a lot of technical issues and i'm playing it with the latest patch unless a fan patches a game there ain't gonna be no more patches so with that being said you should know that if you play this game there are a lot of issues it's rough there were times where my character would glitch across the screen teleport walk like he had no legs and i had to end the game and load the save multiple times just to get it to work or sometimes i had to load the save and try to find some way to get out that area even though it was damn near impossible because he was glitching so much and go to another area just to get it back to normal enemies glitch there's a lot of bugs which are party members the camera angles are not the best yes this game does have more than its fair share of bugs even with the latest patch installed is it unplayable no it's very playable there are bugs in it and they should have ironed out more of the bugs for sure and some of them will annoy the fuck out of you and the draw distance for some people might be ass because i don't know if it's just me but i'm playing the latest patch and the draw distance on the game is not good now to be fair i did watch some other playthroughs of the same version i'm playing where the draw distance was a bit better so maybe they messed with some of the files inside the ini file or the documents whatever i didn't want to mess with it because it's a german game translated by fans so i don't want to fuck it up and i didn't find any graphical settings inside the menu in game so i just had to deal with it it might be better for you so i don't know if that's just on me or there's just a game itself 
The draw distance stuff is only a minor annoyance to me. And with all that being said, do I recommend playing this game? Yes, it's a rough game for sure, but there's an enjoyable experience in there. You might have to play it a bit to warm up to it, and it's definitely rough around the edges, there's no denying that, but I enjoyed it, and I don't regret playing it. I can definitely see how some people that play this game or might play it in the future, if they think it's average or above average, I can see that. I don't like putting labels on games or putting numbers, I just like telling you what I like and didn't like and if I enjoyed it, but I think there's a good game in there and it's what I experienced. I think it's a good game. Rough, yes, but enjoyable. Thank you for watching. You know how to get into contact with me. Leave a comment if you want to. I will leave links in the description where you can download the game and more info about it. You know how to get into contact with me. Have a great day.